morning, everybody. My name is Bernie Gillette. I'm running for Commissioner Post 3. I make a decision to re-election. A lot of people always don't know why you decide to run and start off. It's a great question. The reason I decided to run was because of 2 Chronicles 7 portion. I think most of us know that verse. And I knew a lot of people who actually prayed that verse. A lot of Christians feel like the country's not where it should be and we're going the wrong track. So probably for 10 years, I knew Christians would pray that verse, and I myself prayed that verse. And one day, being as I am, I just got a little upset with God and said, God, I just don't understand it. I know there's millions of Christians praying this verse along with myself, and yet I don't see you healing my nation. And no sooner did those words come out of my mouth, and I heard God say, it's as clear as everything. Well, you want to clean up your nation, but you're not willing to clean up your own backyard. And that kind of hurt I had to get involved. That's the time I started getting involved, and that was probably back around 2007, 2008. And at that time I got involved, I became part of the Republican Party in Paul County. I started attending meetings, uh, became a precinct chair, became first vice chair, and before long I became the uh, chairman of the Republican Party. And after that I knew God was calling me to do more. And he wanted me to run for Commissioner Post 3. That's not something I really wanted to do. I kind of thought I'm going for a while. But as you know, he usually wins out, he gets his way, and I'd probably rather be in his will than what he wants me to do than be out of his will than what I want to do. So that being said, I'm here seeking a second term because I feel like there's still a lot of things we need to do. Holland County needs a lot more infrastructure to bring in business so that we can relieve the taxes off the tax. Ever since I've been in, one of the main things I've shouted is we've got to have more sewer. Before I got in office, it was amazing that people, the foreman, felt it was okay to start an industrial park, and that industrial park had no sewer. Well, sewer is very important when you're talking to businesses and trying to track them down. It's important when you're trying to keep them in the county. We had several businesses who were ready to pack up and leave because they didn't have any sewer. One of those businesses are still here today because I was very instrumental in helping Sunnyland get its sewer. It does have sewer today, and that is a good thing because now those businesses are not leaving and we use it to attract more businesses. So when you're looking at attracting, attracting businesses, there's probably three important things. One is water, two is sewer, and three is fiber optics. And if we as a county and taxpayers want to spend our money, I feel that's where we should spend the money. That's what's going to attract the businesses to the county. That's what's going to help keep the burden of the taxes off the back of the people and own and help the, the companies and commercial retail to help, you know, put some of that cost so it's not all on the people. And that's okay. That's the way most places are. Now, we are a veteran community. And there's nothing wrong with being a veteran community, but we do want to optimize that and make as many jobs here that we can get here. We have a lot of people who leave the county to work, but we have a lot of people who come from other counties here to work. That's the way it always is, but we always want to try to optimize it so we keep as many people in the county working here. At least they have that option. There are people who choose to work out of the county, and that's fine too. Another thing is uh, we saved the county a lot of money when we moved the 911 center. When the 911 center was moved to up at the airport, that was the, not the main location. The main location, actually, the first location is where it is now. Tony Crow found that out. He came to me and told me about it, so I started doing some homework. And I found out that probably it would be better suited where it is now. It would be a lot safer there and it would have a lot better access to fiber optics. Where it, was, where it is at the airport, yes, there's fiber optics to the airport, but there was no dedicated lines. I talked to David Muffer and he said you've got to have two dedicated lines for a 911 center. So we would have had to run more fiber just to take care of it. And I talked to Scott Green and Scott Green said, hey, the, city, the state will not allow us to run more fiber down the 278. I said, well, how do we get there? He said, you're going to have to go heat trail it through back roads all the way to the airport. The next question is, well, what's it going to cost to do that? We started looking into it. Talk to a company out of Rome who does it, does it for a lot of other uh, counties in Georgia. They told me because your county organization, you're probably around 60,000 a, a mile starting off if you hit no rock. They said if you hit rock, it could be up to 150,000 a mile. 
So let's just say it's 60,000 miles. Let's say because you're a peak trail and you have to go 12 to 20 miles. Well, if you went 20 miles, we're talking about $1.4 million. And that's a huge savings that we have to spend. Where it is now, we went less than a mile. And it's redundant. We have cable coming in both ways. We have it coming in each side of the building. So if one side of the cable gets cut, the other side is still there. So that's one way we say county a lot of money. That was a good thing that we did. Sewer at Sunnyland, I'll go back to that for a second because that's a good thing. We need more sewer. There's a couple projects we're looking at now on 92, also over in the Ridge Road area. Hopefully we can work those out. We're going to attract some business. And like I said, I'm always, always big on the sewer. If, if uh, I get related to one thing I really want to do is focus more on the homestead exemption. We have one of the lowest homestead exemptions around. I wanted to do this before, but when you put it to the math, the math just didn't work out. As we get more business in, and where the where the uh, millage rate is now, that's something we can take another look at, and hopefully we can raise the homestead exemption again. That's going to help take taxes off of the backs of the people, and and put it, you know, let, let the, uh, businesses pick up a little bit more of that tax load. Other than that, I, I always want to keep the government as transparent as I can. I always answer questions. I try to always return every phone call. Still, the number one complaint to get as a commissioner is roads. Believe it or not, people still have potholes, uh, things on the side of the roads, and we always want to help and take care of that, too. I think we have a, a very good department that does handle that. We're doing a lot of restructuring. That's been very positive. I think the bringing Frank Baker on the position that he's been brought into, it's, it's just been a really Big step for the county and really helping the county out. And with that, I, I'll go ahead and open up the question now. Mr. Yes. Collette, you just said, you know, that those people that choose to leave the county to go to work, okay? Yes. Why are they choosing to do that? Lots of times it's their decision, okay? When I moved to, oh yes ma'am, when I moved to Pauley County, okay? I personally moved to Pauley County 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was working in Swan. Okay. I just try to find a job. I like my job in Swan. I moved to Pauley County. I wanted to live in Pauley County. Every day when I came home, I saw a beer on the way home. I enjoyed that. I like Pauley County. I like living out here. And I did not even try to change. I decided that I was going to keep my job in Swan and still drive back and forth. And that meant sometimes two hour trip home. Okay. An hour trip in the morning. That was my decision, something I chose to do. I have a lot of people who told me the same thing. Mm -hmm. But like you say, and I agree with you, the people that don't want to do that should have better options. And that's where we need to attract more business to do that. To attract that business, we are going to have to have a lot more sewer and infrastructure that this county has. Okay. Next question. I have a question. You, you keep talking about sewage and we have to have a sewer to attract businesses. But the infrastructure is set up in the Northeast Corridor area, which also affects the top of the Citrus Corridor and all. And I don't understand why, if you've got this already in place, why you're not trying to get industry to come in and find the areas of that. And there's a wonderful place up there that we're going to build houses on it, but would be a great industrial park where the soccer field is. I don't understand why industry, you know, everybody gets all excited when there's a new little restaurant open which is fine. I mean, it helps. But we need major, major industry. And, and there's just no, everybody's trying to focus on getting sewage down in the area around Highland and not where it's wide open up there. And yeah, that's the other, other question I have about that is um, there was a big, you know, a lot of questions about building houses in nature's wall. And I have a question as to why that was such an emphasis on making that look like it was a bad thing, which it wasn't, and then turn around and not do anything about some of the other building that was going on. It was, it was very much a political poise, what I saw. And then along with that, um, there was a promise that the little church would get water. And the guy that was building Nature Wall had already said that he would let uh, the church come up to the subdivision and get their water. And then, of course, we now have a moratorium, which is another, I think, political um, boy, boy. 
just to help you get people elected, because it wasn't important up until this year. So my question is, first about industry, and then why about the water? You know, why did they do, if it was such a big deal, and people kept saying, let's have the water in the church, and then all of a sudden they had a way to do it, and then it got yanked. Yeah. Two great questions. Uh, why industry up in that in the county? I have no problem with that, and I will support that. But you know, you don't put industry where you want industry to go. So a lot of times, industry has a say so. But there are three, there's an industrial parks in the city empty that don't have industry in it. And why like which, which industrial park are we talking the, about? The, there's, there's three of them in the county. And right. one, like the over in the government complex. Now, the, that, that has got basic industry, or you have to share the department and things like that. But I'm talking about major industry. The one on 278. You're talking about the Alice, right? The Alice. And then uh, Dallas, also Dallas, Dallas, is a Dallas is a good question. The Dallas uh, Industrial Park. The Dallas Industrial Park was really built to be housing. With housing, you don't have to have a deep foundation. Really, and truly, that should never have been industrial park. We have taken companies out there and they see how much rocks out here. They don't want to go there, which is part of the problem up north, too. You have to understand when a company's looking at foundation for a business, if you're talking about big industry, they have a large footprint. That's expensive when you start moving rock. So they want to come to hire them when they know, hey, it's already flat. I don't have to do a lot of grading. And my footprint or my foundation is going to be easier and cheaper, OK? It's not going to, be as, it's going to cost as much. The first time I ran, I had a lady come up to me and she said, Mr. Platt, we need a Kia plant in Poly. And I thought that would be great. I wish we could have a Kia plant in Poly. But the reality is we'll probably never have a Kia plant in Poly. Have you been down to the Kia plant? It's probably a mile long, isn't it? When you take all the subsidiaries with it. We don't have a mile of black land anywhere around here. You're not going to have, we're talking the industry into spending $30 million just to pray before they can even come out of the ground. So we have to first realize what industries we can attract. Are the best thing we can go after these 50 to 100 employee industries. That's where we need to focus. We have a wonderful IBA with Robert Krauss now leading it. Okay. And have a okay. wonderful EBO with this. Robert Krauss. But where are, the other, where are those industries? Even with 100, you know, we've been talking industry in this county for ever since I've been here for almost 28 okay. years. But those, you're not attracting those. Well, 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 let's, let's talk about the reality right now, okay? Robert Randall's another good guy. They're working hard, but they've got a lot going on. A lot of things you can't talk about. There's one industry looking at coming here, looking at spending 10 million just on a facility. Okay? This is going to be off 92 if they decide to do it. Because why? Because it's going to be a little bit cheaper. Where are those industries right now? Where have they been throughout the whole last 10 years? We came through a recession. And we know that housing leads commercial and retail. We are just now starting seeing re uh, housing come back. You are not going to see commercial come back until after you know housing is going real well. We're close to seeing commercial come back. Most companies have been downsizing for the last 10 years, cutting employees, trying to save money. Most companies have trillions, if it's a Fortune 500 company, they may have millions or even trillions of dollars offshore. They will not bring it back because of the high taxes. They, it's better for them to leave it there than it is to bring it back and pay 39% in taxes. With this new tax bill that passed, though, that's a good sign. Because you heard the day that it passed, Walmart, Verizon, and other companies announced they're just going to give their, their uh, employees a $1,000 bonus just because the tax bill passed. That's because they know they got all this money sitting offshore, and they understand that. And they said, now we can bring it back. It's going to be a lot cheaper. It's probably going to be at 19 or 20 percent to bring it back now. They'll pay that to bring it back. When they start bringing all this money back, that's going to help the economy, and you're going to see a lot of growth. You're going to see these companies wanting to expand. I think we are positioned in a good place to attract all these companies. Like I said, we've got a lot of stuff we're talking about. I've got two big uh, things going on in, in my post alone that could be just huge. Uh, Greystone's looking at uh, moving everything over here. They hadn't wanted to do that. They're just now at the point where they're, they're ready to talk about doing that. And it's all based on the economy. You have to wait. You have to follow what's going on. Once we see housing come back, which we are seeing it come back now, then we can see industry. Okay. Uh, what's the second part of the question? Was the water? <coughs> the first time I heard.
dirty thing about water that starts to go in there and do it. Uh, that's a nice tester, I'm sure it is. I don't know if they have a way to get water. You're talking about what, probably hundreds of gallons. From what I understand, their well is one run dry, and they have to actually haul water in and fill that well up. Okay, but I don't know if they have the, the means to do that or not. And the, the county can't do it for them. So I don't know. So, you know, we need, like I said, the three things we need to do, and I'll end it on that, is infrastructure is important, and water is important. We need to make more sure that more citizens have water availability to water. Uh, wells are one front and drive <coughs> county. We also need a lot more sewer for industry and we need um, fiber optics for those industries too. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. One quick question real yeah. quick. Uh, uh, it's, up to it's, up to you. it's up to you. It's up to you. You talk about the economic development board. Um, when I first opened up my business here in Baldwin uh, nearly two and a half years ago, I started reaching out to them. Last week was the first time that somebody actually picked up the phone and I still haven't received a phone call back and other questions that I had. Um, with the amount of money that the county is paying them, what are they doing? Okay, that's, that's a good question, fair question. When Robert first got on board here, he took a look at things and Robert knows what he's doing. He's the guy that was in Douglas County. He brought the Red Cross to Douglas County. He brought Google to Douglas County. He brought fiber optics to Douglas County in a way that the EDO owns and makes money off those fiber optics so they become self-sufficient. Everywhere he's gone, check out his record, he has done real well and made EDO and Economic Development Organization self-sufficient, which is the best thing that could happen to a town. The one reason he couldn't do it here when he first got here, he had three industries or three entities, I should say, trying to take the lead road. We had the IBA who was trying to go out and track business. We had um, EDO is trying to go out and track business. We have a chamber who's going out and track business. You can't do that. When Robert first got here, there was an offshore company, a big company, who still got Paul in there, but because of the economy, they're not ready to move. They said, the economy's not ready yet. We're not ready to make this commitment yet because the economy's not there yet. But still, it's going to be a, a company from Europe coming here. I've met with them. I've talked to them. Uh, they were very interested in, in coming here, too. But, uh, Can you guys email each other? Well, yeah, you've got last word. What I just want to say real quick is that um, they, uh, God, I was going to work. You're good. Talk? We'll talk, okay? But I'll get to you. I'll let you get that answer to anybody else who wants to do it, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Since then, there's been a lot of things go on that when I ran, ran the first time, I had no idea that some of these things were going to happen. 
uh, issues that we're dealing with today. But I, I made a couple notes here and I wanted to hit on some highlights of just some positive things that we've done um, and some good things that have happened over the last several years. We've been working on the reservoir since I got in office in uh, January of 2011. That was my first day in office, January 1, 2011. And since then, every vote that we've had has always been a 5-0 vote when it comes to that reservoir. And I think that there, there's most people agree with it, the voters voted for it. But I think what's going to happen is 25 years from now, folks are going to look back and they're going to say, hey, you know what, the leadership that was in place at that time, the leadership in, not only on the Board of Commissioners, but in the county and the cities, the leadership that was in on the, as far as the citizens and the citizens voted for it, they're going to say those folks made just a great decision. Look where we're at and look at the asset that we have now because we have the water that we have. I'm excited about that we were able to bring the Georgia State Patrol here to Paulding County. I think it's another level of security. It's a, it's a great opportunity we have, and they're in the uh, Water Department building. It used to be the Water Department building on Bill Crew. And several things happened there. The Water Department had outgrown that building. And so it, it worked out good to have that as the facility for the Georgia State Patrol. Um, driver services. We put, brought the driver's license place. At one time, we actually used to be able to get our driver's license in Paul <coughs> at the Dallas Library. And uh, that went away. And uh, so bringing back Georgia State Patrol and the driver's services is a, is a great opportunity for the citizens that we don't have to go in another county and wait in line. We put a new fire station out in Post 2 on Mulberry Rock Road. We, we did a study and we we got looking to see where we needed firehouses and what could we do to help out with the citizens' insurance rates. And what we realized is we needed to put some smaller firehouses in spots where we needed them and, and not think that we need to spend millions of dollars on a larger firehouse, take that money, divide it out a little bit, and put some smaller ones in there. And so that's been a, a uh, success there, and I'm excited about, I'm excited about that. Post two, has its first new large park. Post 2 didn't have the large park before. Some folks have asked how come it's out on Mulberry Rock Road. Uh, even some folks have asked why wasn't it pushed on out there in the Yorkville area. Well, that's a good question. Post 2 used to stop at Buckhannon Highway. Post 2 didn't go from Buckhannon Highway all the way out towards the airport in 278. So when they bought that land years ago, Don Powell was in office, they bought the property, and that's where they purchased it at, and that was more in the center of Post 2 at that time. Beautiful park, passive park, uh, it's a lot like Wide Oak Park, and we're real excited about that. Vernon mentioned the 911 center, and I know he didn't get too much in the details. Um, it was very interesting that when the 911 center was originally brought to us, it was brought to us and they wanted to do that in a fire station up at the airport. Well, when they brought that to us, not everybody was forthright with what they were doing. They didn't let everyone know that what they were really working on was a commercial airport up there. <laughs> the vote happened to put the 911 center up there in the firehouse and then later they announced a commercial airport. Why would you ever have a 911 center at a commercial airport? So I did some research, found out that not only would you not, the government everywhere, state and local government, recommend do not do it. Do not ever do that. So Tony Crow took the lead on that. We got looking and we ended up finding out there were three spots to put it originally. The number one spot is exactly where we put it. We actually own the land right there beside the DFAX building. And that's where the 911 center is today. That was important to me. Because if we had waited around to put it in an area that it didn't need to be, which was up at the airport, if we had waited on that, the citizens would still be without a 911 center. And why would, why would we do that? So we got that done. It's a great facility for the employees. If you've ever been to the old 911 center, you would, you would know firsthand, hey, we, we needed the new 911 center. And you know what? It's not, the citizens don't think about it until they push the buttons 911. When they push it, they expect things to happen. And in that facility that we have, things are going to happen and we're going to take care of the citizens. And that's one of the things that make me sleep good at night to know that. Um, 
Vernon touched on sewer and water, and we're working on a lot of things when it comes to sewer and water. I'm very excited that we're having the widening of Highway 92. The RDOT department, along with the state, worked on that forever. Still working on plans right now of Highway 61, and that'll come sometime. Uh, one of the things that was never really out front that I'm excited that I had a small part in um, was allowing citizens to speak. There was a time where there was folks on the Board of Commissioners, my first term, that did not want citizens to be able to speak. Uh, they, they didn't want them to be able to come up there during the commission meeting. I felt like that was important. We need to make sure that landowners that own land in the county and the citizens and the taxpayers had an opportunity to come up there and speak. Whether we wanted, whether it was throwing darts at me or not, it didn't matter. They needed that opportunity to do it. And, and, and I have fought hard to make sure that continues on. We're working on a park study right now. The park study is to find out exactly what the folks are looking for out there in the park. One of the number one things is walking trails, passive parks like Wide Oak and the new Mulberry Rock Park. But we're looking at, hey, how many folks want to look at ball fields? What do they want to look at as tennis courts, basketball? What else do they want to look at? So we're spending some money on the park study to get that done so that we know what folks are looking for today, tomorrow, and in the future. And that'll help us to know what we need to do in those parks because we've got parks like Mulberry Rock Park that will actually have a second section in it in years to come. And I'd like to thank the citizens for their sploshed vote because that's why we're able to build those parks. Um, we're working on the new jail. The voters voted for the new jail. Uh, doing a lot of work on stormwater. And some folks think that's, that's not a big idea, big deal. Several years back before I got in office, they cut stormwater out of the budget. Well, that's fine to cut something out of the budget, but I don't believe that if you have a department that needs to be there, you don't just need to cut it. You need to trim some things, get you through the tough times, and then bring it back. Storm water is going to affect us very hard here the next 10 to 15 years. It's affecting us now. Developments that were built back in the 80s are there are some of those stormwater things, the culverts, they're failing, and we're having to go in there and take care of that. That's why we want to make sure the builders and developers put the right thing in the ground and do it the correct way because at the end, the taxpayers are going to pay for that. Maybe 20, 30, 40 years down the road, but it's going to happen. Stormwater is a very vital, important thing in this county, but it's another one of those things until you find out that it's failing, you didn't know that we needed it. Um, another thing that we're working on right now, Bernie mentioned several things, but we've got a, uh, voters voted two splash boats ago for a fire station out 278 West. Well, we're working on that. We're this close to that. And uh, we're excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. And if everybody will continue working together, we're going to have a groundbreaking on that before the end of the year. Uh, the citizens deserve that firehouse. That firehouse was not voted to put in any certain post because I want to remind you that 278 West towards the airport on both sides of the road when the original vote was done happened to be in post four. Not post two, in four, but post four. Now the district lines change because of the 2010 census. Then you've got post two on the left, you've got post four on the right. But that firehouse is going to be out there some way to serve the citizens in that area. We need it for Pool Elementary in that surrounding area. We're a long ways away from other firehouses there. And we've done a lot of work the last 90 days on trying to get that done. We've worked on it before with some pushback, but I believe that's going to, I believe that's going to happen soon. One of the questions uh, that came up a little earlier, we're, we talked to somebody asked a question about uh, moratoriums. Uh, it's not a political move on moratoriums, not at all. If you ask the, the past chairman, not the one that just left, but the one before that, if you ask that chairman and you ask those board commissioners who were there at the time, they'll say one of the biggest mistakes that they made were allowing PRDs to be down to 8,000 square foot lots. I'm in the real estate business. I've been in that all my life. You look at what happened in Hiram at the uh, subdivision not too long ago. When you're looking at 8,000 square foot lots, you, you're going to have problems. That's been on our mind. We've actually worked on things the last 12 months. 
we put the moratoriums in place because of certain things. There's there's so many lots on the ground right now that are already zoned PRD that we're not going to have any control over. Talked about the development up, up north of the county, and, and I'll try not to mention names, but when you, you talk about that and that was a political thing, that was not a political that was not a political thing. You can go and you can say as a developer, as a builder, that I've, I'm, I've, I want to rezone these lots and you get 300 lots. And they say, well, you're going to have to do this road, this road, and help out here, and do this and this. And then all of a sudden you come back in and you want 300 more. And you want another 100 more. And you want this. What you've done is you've asked and 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 you've received this. And before you know it, you've got so many houses down that road did some of us drive in there and say, did they not have another way out? Well, there is another way out. But it's not the county's responsibility, the board of commissioners, nor is it the taxpayers, to pay for those other ways out. You've got to work together. Those folks are in business, and it's not my job to see that that person makes a profit. It's my job to see that the citizens of Pauley County are protected. That particular issue came up. There were all kinds of stipulations that were there. That person didn't want to go with the stipulations. Those stipulations were on the other one that we approved that day. He decided to go along with the stipulations. You got to do what you got to do. We're, they're there to protect you, the citizens. That's why they're there. That's why there was a zoning not too long ago that we turned down because they wanted a pri private sewer system. We're not allowed to do that in Paulding County. And if we allow private sewer systems, before we know it, you guys are going to be paying for those upgrades, millions and millions and millions of dollars. And I said that in that meeting. Uh, can you take some questions? I'll be glad to take. I do. Okay, I'll be glad to take some questions. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, everyone has a question because he only has a minute twelve. I have a minute twelve. I have one question. Okay. Last week at the airport authority meeting, when the airport authority went into a turn and just their session. You and Mr. Collette stood up and talked to the citizens. You said what I have been told by several people and from seeing a video that that you and Vernon and Tony Crow helped to write or wrote the resolution 1501. Is that is that the three of you wrote the resolution 1501. That's yes I or no. I didn't say that. That was actually said by Mr. Clett. He didn't say that Vern, that Tony wrote it. He said it was input from all three of us. Okay. When all three of us put input on it, all three of us had a, a all three of us put input. Myself put some things together, and Vernon put some things together on the resolution 1501. That was that was done by Vernon and myself. Okay. Okay. Did you have any assistance from a legal? Any, I did not. Any lawyers kept writing? I did not. Anybody from out of county kept writing? Absolutely not. I did not. No. Okay. And, that, and I think that question was answered that day. Okay. Yeah. And I'll be glad. Look here. I got nothing but time. I'll be glad to answer your questions. You just answer it. And and when it comes when it comes to the airport issues, go map. I'll let Jim go, but I will be glad to sit here. I'll have breakfast, lunch, dinner, <laughs> snack, and whatever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Thank Thank you. You. Excuse me, I had a dry throat. I had throat surgery years ago. So as I talk, uh, I can take a little step. Okay. I'm Jim Ashworth, uh, and I'm currently running for the Commission for a Post. My wife, Janet, and I have been married 44 years. Uh, we have two children, two grandchildren, and the two children attend the Paula County Schools, and my grandchildren are currently in the schools up in, the, in North Pauling. Um, I believe in family values. I've always felt that uh, family should come first in your life. And I have uh, been a Baptist deacon for 29 years. Thank you, Chester. And uh, so family and, and, and 
a Christian life is very important to me. So everyone asked me, why are you going to get involved in local politics? And I'm the kind of person that, you know, I can sit back and I can listen for some time. People gripe and complain. They do nothing and they don't even go out and vote. Uh, so, you know, I'm the kind of guy to take charge. I'll jump in deep deep and try to get the uh, issues resolved. And uh, so, uh, my campaign platform is based on unity, progress, and results. Okay. Um, I have the ability, and I always have had to, to bring people together, uh, to find a way that we can all work together. So I bring that ability to the BOC and can help with that. Um, progress. Progress is a result of working together. Uh, usually I roll up my sleeves, like I said, and I'll get involved. Uh, I'll listen to all issues. I'll take recommendations from folks. Uh, and then I'll make a reasonable, sound judgment that will solve the issues. All right, so from progress you get results. And some results are measurable and some are not. Uh, but if you build on these progresses along the way, you'll, you'll get results in the overall uh, scheme of things. Uh, during my professional career, I started out as a ditch digger at Ford Concrete, uh, and I worked my way up to eventually I was president of a multi-100 million year uh, revenue firm, and uh, I've held every position along the way, so I'll never ask anybody to do anything that I haven't done in the past or wouldn't, or, or wouldn't do now. Uh, so. Uh, I've been involved in this community for over 30 years in some form of leadership role. Uh, started out with my young kids, Cub Scouts, I was a dead father. We then into rank basketball, my daughter and son, I was assistant coach with them. Uh, I was vice president of the Pauley County High School Band Boosters Association. Uh, the year Bill Clinton was elected, uh, Pauley County High School Band was the only band from the state of Georgia that went to Washington for his inaugural. And so we went along, tag along, had just, just a good time just to, as the kids did. Uh, I have been uh, president of PTSA at Pauley County High School. And I've even uh, uh, ventured off to Washington, D.C. about three times with middle schoolers, uh, helping chaperone those kids. So. <laughs> uh, I'm past chairman of the uh, board of the Pauley County Chamber of Commerce. I was involved uh, with the chamber. I think I got started around 2004 with the chamber, and uh, eventually became the, the, the chairman there. And, and uh, uh, I've also uh, passed advisory board member uh, for an early childhood learning program at KSU. I served on that advisory board for about six years. And if you remember, when Chat Tech was originally open in Holland County. It was through an early childhood program. So uh, I've been involved, I like being involved with the uh, family thing. So uh, currently, I am the chairman of the Education Foundation here in Pauline. And we have amassed in about 10 years over a half a million dollars in assets that we manage. And we give out uh, somewhere around $30,000 a year in scholarships, teachers' grants, and school grants. And so I'm, I'm proud of that. It's a, it's one of the biggest foundations in the county and been so successful. So I want to I want to bring this type of atmosphere, leadership atmosphere, to the board of commissioners uh, and help move this county forward. I want to support the pro business environment. That was one thing in the chamber we were trying to do back before recession hit was to bring business here and be pro business uh, with the way we do business here. And if we can bring business here that makes sense right now. We're, our infrastructure is not where it really needs to be, but data centers, uh, medical office buildings, uh, plain office buildings, um, even some light manufacturing, and yes, uh, more retail. So those types of businesses do not use a lot of water and sewer. So we can support those types of businesses while we build our infrastructure so later we can bring in some uh, bigger, heavier industrial uh, companies. But uh, right now, the, the main industry, and it's always been in our county, 
is the housing industry. And we need to work with our developers and the builders to come up with zoning that we can all live with. Uh, they can make a little money in their business, but yet we keep our citizens happy. Um, See. We need to take advantage right now of the widening of Highway 92. I mean, I've lived in this county for 48 years. And it's been a long time coming. I'm glad to finally see that, the, that we were able to finally get the funding from the state and get this uh, project ongoing. But we need to take a look at the corridor and see what we need to do about it. zoning for businesses and, and get the right mix of uh, housing, multifamily housing, businesses you know, along this corridor. And along with that, we need to look at Seven Hills Boulevard. It's got the same from Cedar Crest all the way to Old Parcel Highway. There's a lot of open land there that hasn't been developed. And we could do the same type of uh, uh, work there with bringing businesses in that area. And I'd even like to see an aquatic center come. You know, we don't have one. Our kids don't have to go out of county uh, for all events. And so one of those two corridors we ought to look at trying to work uh, trying to get the aquatic center brought in. So let's talk about the white elephant at the General Aviation Airport. A lot of people were upset about the commercial uh, uh, wanting to come to the county, but right now, until we rescind the suits, mediate, negotiate, or even get into court, there's nothing we can do about it until that happens and we get that behind us. Okay? So we get that behind us, we can move forward. Uh, the firm that I used to work for, I uh, helped put together the award-winning master plan for the airport. And in that plan was business pods, P-O-D-S pods. And what pods are is a group of similar industries, uh, whether it be aviation, like commercial, multifamily, or even we had a hotel convention center uh, show there. And eventually one day that may come around to be. But you don't have to have commercial aviation to bring in those type of businesses. And so uh, I just want to think, one of the things I'd like to do is just get these suits behind us, wherever way it takes best to get it done and move forward. Uh, the last issue I want to talk about today is something real dear to me is my grandson is a Down syndrome child. He's nine years old, and he has to go to Atworth every summer to play baseball for special needs rec teams. Now, we have a field out at the Burnt Hickory Park that's been sitting there growing weeds since that park opened because the county doesn't have enough money uh, to finish that field. And I talked to them, and uh, you know, they say, well, we almost have enough money to put a turf down, but we don't have the money for the dugouts and backstops and so forth. So I'd like to see uh, citizens work with and maybe put together a fundraiser or a team of people uh, to get this park, uh, this ball field finished on the out that park. And beyond the baseball fields are two soccer fields that's never been developed. And I think we can get those done and have a lot of place for our special needs kids along with our regular kids to play. Uh, right now we have two or three different types of special needs. They we have Special Olympics for our kids and they do those at the high schools. Uh, we have some other events, but I'd like to see the county uh, hire a coordinator to work in a rec department to coordinate all the special needs events. So we have those under one roof. Uh, there's a lot of people I've talked to who would to uh, volunteer to work with them, as well as coach if we had some uh, programs put together. So I'd like to see some the special needs programs uh, that Willie County put together. Uh, I mean, this is my son, Branch was nine years old, but before then I really didn't know how many special needs children we had in this community, but I was just surprised to find out how many there are out there, and they need to be doing something other than looking at an iPad. They need to be out getting some exercise and enjoying sports like the other kids. So I look forward to accepting the challenge of the Commission Post 4. I think I can help move the county forward. And Stormy, I thank you uh, for, for inviting us out today with the Georgia Networking Group as well as uh, the Paulding uh, uh, County Uncensored uh, Group for allowing me to speak today. You're welcome. Does anybody have any questions?
ahead. Um, on your website, and, and you, you just spoke about it, you mentioned the aquatic center that you would like to attract. Mm -hmm. You said on your website that if you're not able, if we're not able to attract, then you propose a public-private group to fund it. What do you mean exactly by private public or public private group? Okay, it'd be a partnership with the county through the rec department. Uh, you would bring in maybe a developer that could come in to help uh, finance and and uh, do a lease back to the county. So over over 20 years, the county will wind up owning the facility, and the, we would operate it to make money charge dues to folks, to, just like a, a YMCA would we'll do. Um, and so there would be a, what you call a quasi-public-private uh, development. How would you propose protecting the taxpayers from the private partner walking away so that we wouldn't be on the hook for funding the entire thing? Well, it would be set up as a long-term lease where um, if, if the private part was to fail, then the county could pick that up and still collect dues and memberships from the people to pay, pay it back. Are you aware that Douglas County government pays $600,000 a year to maintain their aquatic center, which has been nothing but a failure for them? They're very expensive. Yes, they are, and you have to kind of roll that into your, your fees and dues. Uh, the school system, I'm sure, would, would pay part of it as part of a partner before, so their students can use it to, for the swim meets and practicing, so that we can involve those folks as well. Okay. Well, we need to be very careful with public-private partnerships. We've yes. gotten burnt by Brett Smith over yes. the $3.6 million bond yes. that the citizens are now paying. <laughs> so a lot I of like, people are, I, are real nervous about Something and I like to limit uh, bond back up the projects, and I don't like to see if either you have a capital outlay of some funds and you have a developer of funds that bring it together. Uh, but I'm, I'm not real uh, hip on uh, the county standing behind projects that are, are not just totally government projects. Nick, you have a question? Sure, if it's fine. Yeah. Um, Jim. Usually with uh, elected boards, individuals have an area of expertise, whether it's policy, or they develop an area of expertise, whether it's policy, budgeting, um, you know, public safety, infrastructure. Do you have a specific area you could talk about that you feel like that you could dive into immediately and, and would fall within your wheelhouse and, and, and would be your kind of uh, uh, develop expertise, so to speak, amongst your, your uh, fellow commissioners? Sure. Uh, my career over the years has been in the construction related business. Uh, I, the company I currently with, we design and build food process facilities all over the country. Uh, and I've run those businesses where, you know, one company was a $500 million a year revenue company. And so I had to not only worry about the budget for the company, but the budget for the clients that we represent, cash flow, uh, managed employees, uh, managed the accounting piece of it, uh, 401ks for employees. So I have a lot of background running a big business. And it makes a lot, have to make a lot of decisions whenever you run a company. But, but I surround myself with people who know individual things. So they can come to me and, uh, and I rely on them for their expertise in my management style, and it would be the same thing as a commission post uh, a chairman, uh, commission post commissioner, because uh, I listen to people and I make reasonable judgments of that I listen to people. Good question. Go ahead. Uh, you mentioned multi family housing around Seven Hills area, so were you relaying that to like apartment style homes? Or Town homes. I'd like to see instead of an apartment style mm -hmm. complex, we have a big parking lot to have individual unit parking, drive under parking or carport attached to the structure, mm -hmm. but have multi, whether it's a single level two bedroom unit to a two story three bedroom unit. But you put all that in one development, and when you drive in, it's just like driving down streets in a neighborhood. And you 
really target your problem or your garage. Uh, and that's the type of multifamily units that I see and not just apartment buildings. Jim, I have one question. Your plan was
And so that's what I'm going to push on every time I meet and talk with people with this, is if you don't like what's going on, get out of the boat. How, how do I? How do you plan to get more? more people to vote? Because everybody says that the voice of the community has spoken that if you look strategically at the last couple of elections, it's been extremely slim as far as the voters. You can go back and look. We, we talk about, I won't get into the weeds of it, we talk about 70 something percent of the people leaving the county to go work somewhere. That's been that way. It didn't just happen, it was that, it was that time when the when the times were good, when the county was built, and it's been that way. And as far as voting, I would love to see more people come out and vote. But nobody's stopping those people from coming out and voting. And when you look at the folks that are in the room right now, a lot of these folks are folks that come to meetings, that are involved. It doesn't matter what side of the issue you're on, but they, they, they get involved and they look at what's going on in their community. As far as I'm, as far as what can I do as an individual? Um, and I don't tell the elections department what to do, okay? But the bottom line is, with the elections department, they're out there, we've done early voting the last quite a few years now, and that's brought more voters out. We have more early voters now that come in and early vote for three weeks than we do the day of the election when it comes into the primary. It's out there, they know about early voting. I mean, used to, when I was a kid, and I remember Dad saying, you know, it's, it's vote day tomorrow. You just had that day. People stood in line for hours and they were for, to vote. Now we've got three weeks ahead of time. We've got multi locations to do it. We have more people voting ahead of time than what we do the day of. Folks have to get involved. It's not that they don't see it. If what's going on on a May 22nd election, what's going on? Tell me what's going on in the county. Huh? Well, May 22nd, I can tell you what's going on. Right. Folks are talking about, been talking about proms they're working up to, graduations, there's weddings, can't wait till summer, I'm going on vacation next week, the whole nine yards, and the folks get so tied up in that that they don't pay attention to what they're doing. So, if Jim's out knocking on doors and I'm talking to people, that's his way of getting people to vote. If I'm doing the same thing, that's my way. You've got signs out there, you've got social media, you've got what the elections department's doing. So it's not just one thing, but the old thing of, you know, 20% of the people do 80% of the work, I, I think that's wrong. I think it's actually 10% of the people are doing 90% of the work. So the folks got to get out and get involved in the community and pay attention to what's going on and get out, get out and vote. As far. But the people that went to vote, those people, you know, when I talk to somebody and they say, you know, I don't agree with this, this, and this, and then you find out that they didn't vote, it, well, I didn't vote, and I said, well, you know, that's where your voice is, and then you can talk about it, but, but that's, I'd love to see more people here. I got one other thing. Uh, you know, we've had in the last five years a lot of people move into the county. And if you look at statistics, when generally when people move into a new area, it takes them three to five years before they'll get involved with communities and start voting. So if you look at the number of people that's moved into this county in the last five years, I mean, those people haven't probably had any register to vote, much less going out to vote. But that statistically was brought to my attention that, you know, three to five year period, you know, those people don't vote. So we got to get the word out to those new communities. And you pull the numbers and you look at where who's voting at what precinct. It's interesting to me to see what precincts vote heavy and the ones that aren't there at all. Right. Some of that has to do with what you just said, those you know, people waiting to get involved. But I also think it's the, the areas of the county where, you know, the younger folks are so busy with the kids and school sure. and all that and you kind of yeah, it's seasons in life. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'd love to see that that number change. And folks need to get out and have their voice, have their voice heard. That's what that's what it's about. Well, I thank you guys for coming. It's... So, real quick question. Okay. Um, you talk about bringing business in, utilizing the POD. Um, with a couple of the members and boards that are part of that, that have not been paying their share that they originally agreed to. How would you hold them accountable, and how could you get them removed if they're not going to step up 
and fund it the way that they agreed to originally. Okay, when that was first set up, I kind of helped some with that when, when the EDO was set up. Uh, where you had, we were about there, that's right, or, that's right, because you know, we had where the Paulding County would pay so much, each city would pay so much, and then the chamber, I think, we raised uh, our, our share of it uh, to get us out of To keep going. And the first, what the funding value was for three years, and then after that three years, it was supposed to become self-sufficient mm -hmm. and not have county or any municipality funds going into it. Well, that plan kind of changed. Uh, the director we brought in left for some, for some reason. I don't know where he involved in it, but he left. And we brought somebody new in. Uh, but uh, to answer your question, I'm trying to circle back to, to the question was, uh, when these entities don't pay, uh, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, we had a problem with hiring. It was hard to hire them on to spend their economic dollars in their city and not give it to the EDO. Uh, and we've struggled with power from the very beginning. Uh, is this a is hiring a district? No. Okay. <laughs> Step on your toes. But, but, but hiring has been, but, but the city of Dallas, they've jumped in, and, and of course, Dallas, city of Dallas doesn't have all the retail and backup sales tax that, that hiring has. So the funding is not there like hiring is. Uh, but if an entity is not being involved and you push it to a side and you tend to direct uh, new businesses away from that area until they say, well, we're, we need to be involved in that because we're losing these businesses that could be in our, in our community. And so that's the only way I know to address that situation. Well, I think what Jim said is correct. Uh, but I think he had just a little bit more of a question concerning it. And he, he is right. We did have City of Dallas, City of Hiram, the Chamber, the County, everybody pitching in to put the money there to do it. Um, that, that design was designed to, to be non-political. That's correct. That's, that was our the number issue, right. one goal, to be non-political. And I'm sorry, but there were people in office at the time that chose to make it, and I'm not naming names, nothing but political. Right. Went uh, against the, what the, the committee, number one goal was, was to get it out of politics and, and have a place of what I call one go-to shop, a one-stop shop, to where people came in the county, the chamber wasn't over here telling them this, the IBA wasn't telling them this, City of Dallas, City of Hiram, and the, and, the, and the Board of Commissioners, the county, they were getting the same answer everywhere and everybody working together as, as a team in that economic development was supposed to, is not worried about that they're going to Hiram or to Dallas or whatever. You can't force feed a company to go somewhere that you want them to go. When, when a Walmart comes into your county, and they're, pull, they're pulling the numbers, they know that they've got to have 25,000 people within a certain circumference. And those 25,000 people got to be their shoppers. They know, they know more than you know about it. Same thing with Dollar General. That's why Dollar Generals are going out and popping up everywhere. They know, and that number of people is a smaller, and they're working on those folks to get it, and they're hurting the Walmart. That was designed for that, but his question was, I think, went back to, what are you going to do when those entities aren't paying? Is that right? Yes, sir. I agree yes, sir. with you. I agree with you. And those, the airport authority board, authority board, and the IBA board, the IBA members, you've got those six members. Those six members of the IBA also sit on the airport authority. Y'all know that, we've talked about that. I don't agree with it, it needs to be changed. All right? People say, well, there was a vote, and y'all had a 5-0 vote to change it, and you sent it to the Howard Maxwell representative, and then all of a sudden you had people on your board, one, that decided, the chairman, I don't want to agree with that vote, and they wanted us to change our vote in the back hallway. Well, I'm not going to change my vote in the back hallway. I voted in the public. I said, guys, if you want to change your votes or you want to vote again, you want to vote on something different, let's go back into a meeting in two weeks. Let's vote on it. But you don't change a vote that was done in the back hallway. The chairman of the board of commissioners has always said on those two entities, and that is a question for this chairman and the past chairman. 
It's a very good question, and the taxpayers deserve to know. All right? I, I want to know why the IBA is not paying for the bonds on the water tower of which we've not ever used one drop of water out the airport out of that tower. I want to know why the IBA is not paying for the bonds on the corporate hangar, of which was built improperly. It was not built the way it should be built for what it's supposed to be used for. All right? March 22, 2011, 7 p.m., there was a vote. It was a 3-2 vote, and I voted against the film studio, the water tower, and the hangar. I asked to table it, do more research. We need to work on this. What happened out of that vote? Oh, we got to do it now. We're in a hurry. We got a water tower now. It's never had a drop of water out of it. We got a hangar that killed a man, all right, and it's been improperly done in a film studio up the road that's a tobacco. And I think they need to pay for it. But those same six people sitting on that, sit on the airport authority, of which they are not paying the bonds that they're supposed to pay that were hooked up with Brett Smith. All right? And that's part of what we're dealing with, okay. trying to get them, because I don't think the taxpayers should pay those bonds on any of those projects. All right? We just backed them as a taxpayer because nobody was going to give those people the bonds without us backing them. And with the... It does separate and mingle and stuff because it is past time, so for those who want to leave, they can go ahead because I have a meeting, so i got to leave too. Oh, you can go. Thank anybody you else that wants to leave, 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 le